Welcome back, boss. In this, the gear of MGS2, we'll be discussing the weapons, items, and equipment from 2001's Metal Gear Solid 2 Sons of Liberty, and how they do and don't derive from gear in the real world. The Golukovich forces on the Big Shell use two different kinds of rifles, the AN-94 and the AK-74U. The AN-94, AN being short for Avtomat Nikonova, or Nikonova Automatic, was developed for a trial contest by the Russian army in the early 90s. This project to replace the AK-74 was also known by the codename Abakan, the name of a Russian town. The AN-94 was exotic and expensive as it used a unique gas recoil operation known as the blowback shifted pulse, as well as unintuitive components that took a while to get used to in terms of assembly, disassembly, and maintenance. The Abacan's uniquely shaped magazine makes it easy to recognize. The rifle was discontinued in 2006. The second Russian rifle in MGS-2, as I said, is the AK-74U. The 74U was developed as a Special Forces-centric compact form of the AK-74, also known as Akarok or Cigarette Stub. The 74U combined the interchangeability of the parts of the AK-74 with the size and range of a standard submachine gun. Production on the weapon was actually halted in 1997. Actually, the 74U was basically rejected by the military before winding up in the hands of the police. Intriguingly, the weapon was first deployed by paratroopers during the Soviet-Afghan War. It was because of its relatively poor performance that the weapon was retired into the hands of law enforcement. The legacy of that war still surrounds the weapon, given that in the US it's also known by its Afghan nickname, the Krinkov. This ship now carries enough Simtex on its key structural points to blow it out of the water at the touch of this button. We see two different forms of plastic explosive in MGS-2, Simtex and C4. Simtex was designed in Soviet-era Czechoslovakia back in 1966. Invisible to both airport dogs and security devices, it has long become a staple of terrorism. Many of the turn of the century's most high-profile terror bombings, from the 1988 Pan Am Flight 103 over Scotland, which MGS-2 directly references, to the 1998 bombing of a U.S. embassy in Kenya were carried out with Simtex. It was originally created by the Soviets to provide the North Vietnamese an equivalent to the plastic explosive favored by the U.S. C-4. C-4, also undetectable to airport x-rays, uses explosive material that actually originated as a British tool in the Second World War. By the Vietnam War, C-4 was not only used as a plastic explosive, but not unlike the gunpowder that Raiden was made to ingest in Liberia as a child soldier, sometimes C4 was also consumed in small amounts to get the user high. Importantly for MGS2's backdrop of petropolitics, the originators of C4 specifically were actually an American oil company, Phillips Petroleum. C4s emit ionized gas, which, as we see for ourselves in MGS2, can be detected by using something called an ion mobility spectrometer. IMSs are used not only for bombs, but for detecting chemical weapons and drugs. According to an article on the subject by Analytical Chemistry, quote, the first IMS device was introduced in the late 60s, and chemical warfare agent detectors were introduced in the 70s and early 80s, end quote. The IMS is particularly useful in, quote, field or on-site detection, end quote, just like we see in Sons of Liberty. It's what they call an ion mobility spectrometer. It can recognize ionized gas emitted by C4s. When Fat Man in the game switches to scentless C4s, Raiden has to use a makeshift sensor Stillman builds for you out of a neutron scintillator and a detector of hydrogen bombs. The concept of freezing bombs with liquid nitrogen is very outdated, as it originated in the early 70s. Here's a 1971 article from the New York Times talking about the Army working on, quote, a system that would use liquid nitrogen to freeze bombs so that they could not be detonated. A stream of super cold gas would envelop the suspicious object, freezing all parts until the bomb could be removed. 
Speaking of sensors, in MGS2 we also find a retinal biometric scanner. Biometrics use signatures taken from the human body for authorization and identification. At the time of MGS2's development, it was still a relatively new technology, which could be found at extremely sensitive installations, like nuclear storage facilities. One of the most infamous devices in MGS2 has to be the nanomachines, which in the game operate as a kind of communications medium and access control system. What few people realize is that nanotechnology was already on Futurist's radars as far back as 1991. In Unbounding the Future, the Nanotechnology Revolution, published in that same year, the authors speculated that nanotechnology was going to revolutionize every aspect of modern life in the digital 21st century. And though some aspects of the book's predictions have yet to arrive, nanotechnology has already begun to transform, according to nano.gov, quote, a wide array of industrial sectors, including electronics, construction, packaging, food, energy, healthcare, automotive, and defense, end quote. Next comes MGS2's directional mic, which by today's standards may even seem quaint. Many commercially available directional microphones exist today, and given the ubiquity of mics in smartphones and the like, spies no longer have to typically fiddle with surveillance fans or phone taps like the good old days. But if they need to break out an actual microphone themselves, they might go with something like this, Argo Security's long-range laser microphone, which uses infrared beams to listen in at considerable distance. One weapon that's featured prominently both in MGS2 and 1 is the Heckler & Koch PSG-1. Designed in the mid-80s, PSG-1 stands for High Precision Marksman's Rifle. It was uniquely designed not for military but police and counter-terrorism operations, though in some ways it's basically just a customized variety of the same company's G3 rifle. The coolest detail I could find in the PSG-1 for Metal Gear Solid is its silent bolt closing device, which allows, with just the push of a button, total silence prior to taking a shot. Arsenal gear in MGS2 is armed with a so-called purified hydrogen bomb, a weapon that, as of yet, remains only hypothetical. Known also as a pure fusion bomb, this class of thermonuclear weaponry would not, in theory, require either plutonium or highly enriched uranium to detonate. If such a weapon became possible, experts, like those at the Institute for Energy and Environmental Research, fear it would exacerbate nuclear proliferation, since it would clear a major obstacle for anyone to get their hands on nuclear weaponry. How about EE's so-called worm cluster? Well, computer worms are an idea that actually predates the digital age, as the term originated in a very MGS2 sci-fi novel from 1975, John Brunner's The Shockwave Writer. In it, a disgruntled hacker creates a disruptive data worm to punish a system designed by an elite cabal who built it to create a society of mass conformity. In our modern era, meanwhile, computer worms are like viruses, but much more contagious. They can spread throughout entire networks rather quickly, which is why EE needed an entire worm cluster to bring down the Patriot's neural network AI, GW. Speaking of, a neural network is an attempt by computer science to mimic the structural patterns of human learning. Today known as deep learning, neural networks consist of algorithms that allow a computer-driven system to analyze examples of something and quote-unquote learn how to do that thing. These neural networks consist of nodes which route data streams along a particular path, similar in some ways to the nodes that Raiden has to log into along the big shell. Could these be uploading data from his mission for GW to study as part of the Patriots S3 plan? Who knows? Well that does it for this round, join us next time as we dive into the gear featured in MGS3 Snake Eater. Until next time boss.